In this lesson, we will uh, see how to learn the embeddings of a word. And in particular, we will be focusing on one of the approaches of embedding, which is embedding as a first layer and uh, which will be fed to further layers like LSTM, multiple units of LSTMs. So first, let's see what is embedding. So embeddings are methods for learning vector representations of categorical data. In our earlier lessons, we had seen one hot representation of uh, words. So given a word, it was converted to a categorical data, which is this form. So this vector was in our case 10,000 cross 1 with just one value and rest others 0. So this is the categorical data in this case, one hot representation. And this categorical data is fed to embedding layer. And this gives word embedding. And uh, there are different approaches of learning it. Uh, there can be uh, some approaches like word to vec where uh, our earlier discussion of uh, how king and king is to queen what man is to woman so we had subtracted uh, the vectorized representation of king from queen and we had got some resultant feature vector and similarly if we subtract uh, the man vector from women then we get another vector and these two would be very similar. So this kind of relationship holds true when we uh, learn the word embedding using uh, approaches like word to vec on a large data set on a large number of words on a large vocab vocabulary of a language. So here uh, this kind of pattern will hold true. So uh, if orange juice is there and then mango juice is there. So in this kind of uh, training, there is a notion of context word and target word. So uh, given a few words, whether a word will belong to this context or not, this kind of thing uh, will be achieved using word to vec. So there will be some fixed pattern of the representation. If we know the representation of uh, orange, we will know that for mango it will be very similar. But there is another approach that this uh, embedding layer is just a layer and we uh, create the embeddings on the fly while training. Here you create uh, a embedding uh, matrix which is the vocabulary size and then the number of features in each vector. So this embedding matrix we train and calculate, but other approaches using embedding as a first layer. So feed it the categorical data or one hot, and this will be fed to LSTM layers. And then it will do the prediction, for example, sentiment analysis or any other application of NLP. So we will focus on this approach where we will create embeddings on the fly and these embeddings will keep on modifying with time. So this is just an output of from our previous video where we had uh, created one hot representation of all the doc documents and here 8215 means 000 and 1 and 0 and this will be at place 8215. So this we will feed to our encoding layer. So how it functions? Uh, let's say we want to do sentiment classification and we have some LSTM units. And instead of feeding the word, we will feed the embeddings of words. 0.5 0.25 and so on. 
so this is word embedding similarly second words embedding ew1 ew2 ew3 ew4 and these come from embedding layer so this embedding layer takes as input one hot encoding and it feeds a embedding uh, vector and based on this it will give some prediction y1 and uh, it will additionally feed activation of this unit and based on this and this these two inputs it will predict the y2 similarly y3 and y4 and let's say we want to do sentiment classification in that case we will take all these four outputs and give it to a fully connected layer and using sigmoid activation it will give a value between 0 and 1 and then we can based on the value if it's more than 0 0.5 we will say that it's a positive sentiment otherwise negative sentiment so here you see that embedding is just the first layer uh, in the network so initially let's say this word embedding was some value and based on uh, some supervised setting we will give some documents as well as the corresponding sentiment so in every epoch these embeddings will get modified so these embeddings are not learned beforehand but these are created on the fly during training and here you may find that uh, the embedding of orange and mango may not be related at all let's say it's zero minus 0 0.95 here the first component is plus 0 0.8 0 0.75 0 0.01 so these may not be related and those kind of uh, vector operations which we can do in uh, word to vec may not hold true in this case because here the purpose of this is not to learn the embeddings of the language but to get tuned for a specific purpose in this case sentiment analysis so here that kind of vectorized operation will not hold true so let's see how to uh, create the first layer of uh, embedding uh, in keras so first we will uh, pad sequences you see that all the documents are of different length so here the first thing we will do is that we will make all of them fixed length so if it's more we will trim them if it's less we will add some values so for that we will need reprocessing pad sequences And we will also create a sequential model here. We will import the embedding layer. And we will also be using NumPy. and now let's define the length of embedding so we will uh, keep it some dummy value let's say we encode all the words into a vector of size 5 5 cross 1 and here the document lengths are 4 maximum is 
two, four, six, seven. So let's keep the max length as 10. We already have this encoded docs, which is this uh, categorical representation of words. So we will add or trim the words. Truncating text to values pre or post, whether you want to trim the values from beginning or end. So we will trim it from the end and padding we will also add to the end. And then on what length max doc len. So this will return the padded uh, documents. So let's print and see how it looks. So you see these are the same things 8218215202917187. So four values are there and then six zeros are there because we have made all the document lengths exactly 10. So different number of zeros will be padded. So this is our updated encoded doc. Now what we will do, uh, we will create our model, which will be a sequential model. Because it has no parallel branching, so we will keep it sequential. And then we will add the embedding layer. And here we need to specify the vocabulary size and we had defined vocab size as 10,000. Then embedding length, which is five in this case, and input length equal to 10, which is max doc length. Now we will compile the model mean squared error and now we will uh, see what is the embedding of each of these words so we will output and finally we will print the output So these are the different embeddings of documents. So you will see that uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for all the seven words, all the seven documents, we have embedding. And each document has 10 words because we had limited the size of documents. And you may notice that in the, in the end, these six values are same because these are all zeros, the so padded values. So their embedding all embedding vector is also same for all of these. So this one row correspond to one word in a document. So this is the first document, which is glass of orange juice. So this is glass, embedding of glass. This is embedding of off, this one for orange, and this row corresponds to juice, and the rest all are zero. Similarly, off was in a uh, second word also, glass of, bottle of mango juice. So off and juice should be same, that is second and fourth should be same for both of these. So let's compare. So this second row and this second row it's same. Similarly, fourth row, which is juice, is com common to both. So their embeddings are also same. So this is how uh, you can add embedding layer in the beginning of your network. Here I had just 
uh, added one layer but uh, this should be uh, only the first layer in the network and you cannot add it towards the end and these values will keep updating in different epochs depending on the application 